This idea of following Jesus means being a, a life of being constantly misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Like when I get misunderstood, that's just Tuesday for me. Yeah. I'm not aiming for that. It's just going to happen along the way. Um, one of the things that we've been doing in Uganda is taking people that have just been really bad, like these witch doctors, and uh, taking them on and to say, like, actually, you can't harm children. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you do, I'm actually a lawyer. We're going to try the case. And so <laughs> the lawyer's going to come kill you. Yeah, you know, but they're actually you will never be seen again. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so, but that idea of not just this, like some of us are big on the justice part, but we're not as big on the love and compassion mm -hmm. part. And so I get that if we've been wounded ourselves or you, I mean, who doesn't want to stick up for kids? But at the same time, can we demonstrate both love and justice? Because I don't think there's no yeah. uh, love without justice. No, there's no justice without love. Tell the story of a man that you <clears throat> visited on death row yeah. in Uganda. And yeah, there's a... Uh, you were partly responsible for putting him... Well, his actions were responsible for putting him there, but yeah, justice there's was a, served. There's a, a practice uh, in Uganda, witchcraft, and the witch doctors will actually sacrifice little children and and it's, it would be from like, you know, you'd think of 100 years ago, but it actually still happens from time to time. But nobody would ever taken on a witch doctor. Uh, and this witch doctor had hurt this little boy and cut off these body parts and left him for dead, but the kid didn't die. Mm. And so we tried the case, and the word of this conviction went to 42 million people. It was like, you touch a kid, it's over. But I was thinking about Matthew 5, like, love your enemies. And so this guy's on death row, and I started visiting him. Hmm. Uh, and, and he walked in the room the first time, and he took a knee, and he started telling me how bad he felt about what he'd done to this little boy. And I'm like, you just feel bad. I caught you. Then he started talking about witchcraft and what he had done in his life. And then his words, not mine, he said, I know I'm going to die in here. Do you know what I need? I need forgiveness. Mm. Wow. And wow. it's crazy. And it felt, it really felt like I was talking to a criminal hanging on a cross next mm. to Jesus. Wow. Uh, and then this guy, he comes to faith. I'm like, dude, really? Like, I wasn't trying to get him in. I was trying to keep him out. Yeah. And, <laughs> and, but uh, ever since then, I started visiting him. Every time I was in Uganda, I'd go to the jail. We'd meet. And he actually believes some stuff that some of us don't. He believes he's a new creation. Wow. Um, he's going to be beautiful? separated from society, but he isn't separated from Jesus. And I asked the warden, hey, has anybody ever presented the gospel here to all 3,000 guys on death row? And he's like, nobody. And I said, well, can Kabi do it? I mean, he lives here now. And it was like I did a jet, I think, because he said yes. And Kabi and I stood holding hands inside Lozera, and he presents the gospel of Christ to 3,000 dying men. Yes. You know the <laughs> Here's the crazy part. He totally screwed it up. <laughs> I've never heard anybody hack the gospel worse than God. I don't even know if I believed after that. And, um, and, and you know what uh, he got right, though? He got the idea of forgiveness. Yeah. Wow. And all these men started coming towards him. He grabs a water bottle. He starts baptizing them. I'm like, no, you can't do that. I'm like, well, maybe. <laughs> and then he grabs my hand and he said, Bob, I know I'm going to die in here because of you. <laughs> Awkward pause. Yeah. Uh, and he said, but I want you to know that I forgive you. And I'm like, you can't forgive me. You're the bad guy. <laughs> but he'd been reading Matthew 5 too. Wow. And he knew that I couldn't, he couldn't be perfect if I, wasn't, if I was still his enemy. And there's something beautiful. Seeing what Kabi was willing to do with me when I was his enemy, it makes me want to do that. So you know what I did? Don't be freaked out. But I started a witch doctor school. We don't teach them how to be witch doctors. They already know. But we <laughs> teach them how to read and write. Wow. And the only books they have in witch doctor school to learn how to read and write are the Bible and love does. <laughs> <laughs> You're reading their textbook. <laughs> I love it. So when it came time... To write this next book, everybody always, I told them, you guys are still learning how to spell and you're not that good at it. So I'll write all the words. And what if you make the cover out of your fingerprints? <laughs> so, Those are not jelly beans. <laughs> okay, so get a, get a real tight shot on, on the book. Not mine, just go to the close-up of the book. So the, the things that look like confetti that were kind of artistically put around the word every, everybody always, those are actual thumbprints of who exactly? 
250 witch doctors in this witch doctor school, and they're coming to faith. I'll tell you, I, uh, I got a phone call. I usually get my first phone call at 5 in the morning. It's always some dude in Atlanta on the yeah. way to work, but <laughs> it's like, you know, 5 in the morning in San Diego. I got my last call at midnight from two witch doctors in witch doctor school, and they called me up, and they said, a little boy's been abducted, and they've taken him into the bush for a child sacrifice, but we know where he is. Should we go get the kid? And I'm standing on the bed in my boxers. I'm like, get the kid! <laughs> Four hours later, I get a text message from these two guys in witch doctor school, and it says this, we've rescued the child. He's with his mother. And the last two words of the text message, love does. Oh, my God. I just say, what happens? Wow. Okay. Isn't that amazing? I got to...